funny story to start the show. Uh, is this going to be nipple related? No, it's not. Oh, uh, not. surprisingly. Right? Uh, anyways, when I came back, back from oh, Taiwan, I came into YVR, the airport that is near us. Don't worry about it. Um, and the statue with nipples. No, oh. no, unfortunately not. Are uh, you going to work nipples into this at some point? No, actually. Oh. None. Uh, okay, yeah, so no, you, I don't you think came so. to the Vancouver airport. I'll try. I'll Which see is in if Richmond, I can do it. by the way. Vancouver International Airport, not in Vancouver. Yes. It's in the Greater Vancouver area. That's true. So. Or a Greater Vancouver Regional District, as it's actually called. Okay. The GTA is the Greater Toronto Area. <laughs> the GVRD, sucker. Okay. My bad. <laughs> Anyways, the Wi Fi network there does one of those things where you have to like approve your login thing through a portal and whatever. And I was trying to do it and it wasn't working and I needed internet at that point in time. So I was like, whatever, and turned my Wi Fi off. Didn't really think about it. A little while later, using my phone. And it's like, oh, your Wi-Fi, your uh, data has been turned off because you're at your maximum. My warning didn't come through or I swiped it without realizing it because I hate it when notifications load while you're in your notification bar. Uh -huh. I might have swiped it without actually seeing it. So my data is dead. And I think I'm like six days into the month or something. So <laughs> that sucks. I have a dumb phone for a while. Well, your smartphone, just a dumb user. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so I, I guess, uh, no, yeah, no, I, I failed to work nipples into that. Yeah, you did. That's okay, because I can work nipples into anything. Uh, speak up. Uh, people are asking us to turn the mic up, but I just did a test recording, and it was fine. So um, uh, I guess it was, I guess I had the volume a little high. Actually, I don't even know why that worked at all, what I, what I just did in terms of testing. Maybe I could load up the stream and see if people are messing with me in the meantime. Why don't you let them know what fantastic topics we have for them today? So we have uh, the, the whole catastrophe around TeamViewer, all the, the, the accounts being hacked into or passwords being known or whatever, because those aren't really the same thing. But anyways, we'll talk about that later. Gawker has officially filed for bankruptcy and is saying some other stuff. Uh, Sony officially confirms the 4K ready PlayStation, but I believe it's not being announced at E3 or something. And I don't actually know a fourth topic that's interesting. You sound wonderful to me, by the way. Do I? Yeah, I'm at like 38% on my system volume, so I... Um, okay. Space mining. Space mining. What? I don't know. I didn't see that. That's All right. Space mining. We might not talk about that. Yeah, one. we may not get to that. Yeah. <laughs> Intro time. Cool. turning your Wi-Fi back on for a week. Or maybe not gross. Maybe it's, like, hot. Oh. If you're into that sort of thing, like maybe. phone spit. Yeah. Phone spit. That's probably not good. All right. Apparently the intro is loud. Well, you know what, you guys? There is only so much ow. I can... Ow! There's only so much I can do. Jim's address says, ow! And also that it's pre-recorded, I think. No, it's not pre-recorded. All right, so... Let's get into some topics. First up, we've got, and I actually have no idea whether um, whether Luke said that this was going to be one of our one of our main yeah, topics no, for this week. Yeah. Gawker is no more, at least in its current form. Maybe someday it will reach its final form, but that won't be its current form. Uh, they filed for bankruptcy and have said that they will sell the company. Uh, the headline says to Ziff Davis or someone else that I, I don't think it's necessarily Gawker saying they're going to sell to Ziff Davis. It's that Ziff Davis has yeah. an offer in on them for somewhere to the tune of 90 to $100 million. You know, maybe I should just buy Gawker. What? Yeah, I know you know for a fact that I can't. That's not going to work. Can't afford that. It also just doesn't sound like a good idea. How, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we do that? If we could just, like, life hacker. I, I, I said a tweet about this earlier. I was like, I don't really care about the rest of it, but if life hacker survives, that would be cool. Yeah. If we could just consume, like, just them, 
I'd be down with that. I mean, theoretically. We could use some of the upstairs office space for that, make them all Canadians. Theoretically, they could sell individual publications. So uh, so Gawker is uh, Lifehacker, Jezebel. Deadspin, Gawker.com, Gawker .com, Gizmodo, Kotaku, Jalopnik, uh, and yeah, Jezebel. And uh, I, Deadspin? I don't know if you said that. Yeah, no, you said Deadspin, actually, oh, but, uh, you know, okay. good job. Yeah, um, yeah. You said it twice, which is important Hooray. for people who it's didn't hear you double, the first time. Yeah. Um, so out of all of those, yeah, I think Lifehacker, I, I didn't used to mind Gizmodo, but I can't remember the last time I went on that site. I liked them, I think, like when I was, like, 16. Yeah, a little bit Let's earlier. Let's see if that then. lines up. Nope. How old were you in 2009? 19. You were 19. Or, well, 18 for most of it. 18 for... Okay, so I was close. It was very close. I was actually quite close. Yep. Okay. So, um, basically, yeah, they're filing for a Chapter it 11 bankruptcy. It might even bankruptcy. be more accurate. Um, <laughs> actually, yeah, I think so. Excellent. It was right around there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so they're, they're, they've announced their Chapter 11 filing. Uh, basically, that puts them in, in protection from creditors for the time being while they sort of entertain offers to buy the company. Um, Gawker and Nick Denton have said that they will not pay Hulk Hogan and Peter Thiel the $140 million. They have told their employees that they still plan to fight the case and to operate the publishing business while they do so. Um, but Ziff Davis has come out and said there's, uh, let me just see if I can bring up the, uh, the article here. So this was in an internal memo. It does say for less than $100 million, but yep. like, I'm assuming not a ton less. There's conflicting reports. So this particular one on Recode.net says for around $100 million. But it should be noted that they may end up paying more because this is just their initial bid for it and actually nothing to do necessarily with... Um, how much it'll end up selling for. So someone else could make a counter offer. Yep, yep. It could end whatever. up being a bidding war over Jezebel. Yep. Which I guess someone wants, apparently. Um, I didn't know that these sites as a whole were still that big. I had no idea online written media publications were still worth like tens of millions of dollars each. I mean, I guess it's sort of enormous amounts of traffic. Um, this is a really good clip with Nick Denton basically saying, um, nope, I stand by the decision to publish that, even in light of everything that has happened. Um, he's expressed a lot of frustration with Peter Thiel basically, public, basically funding this lawsuit as a way to, um, I think, I, I forget, I was reading some article about it, but the, the quote from him was something to the effect, don't quote me on this, that's a quote of a quote that's not, not an accurate quote, but sick. Um, so the so something to the effect of that it's not vengeance, but it's more of like a cautionary sort of, like it's more of a deterrent, I think, was some, something close to the word that was used, um, against publishing articles that are basic, that basically amount to bullying. So that was, that was sort of how he interpreted the Hulk Hogan article where this sort of, this individual was being bullied by a publication yeah. that uh, published an article and indeed a sex tape video of him um, banging, to use the term that the kids use these days, I think, uh, a friend's wife. Did they say that? Uh, yeah, banging is still a thing. Cool. There you go. Still Good. a thing, really? Good job. You gotta throw that in at me. Yeah. Well, I guess that's still a thing if you're an old man. Well, like, how long has banging been around for? I don't know, a long time. I'm sure my dad is like well versed with that term. The term or the? <laughs> probably, what are we talking about? I'm here, so probably both. <laughs> <laughs> Just being honest, it's almost Father's Day. You got nine days to figure it out. <laughs> to figure out if he's your father, or well, maybe. What? <laughs> That could, that could be the situation. Yeah. Okay, so Luke's parents aside and their, <laughs> whatever. They don't still watch Wancho, do they? They probably do. Oh, that's a shame. Hi, Mom and Dad. Um, so it'll be a court-supervised auction, and uh, basically the, the lawsuit, one way or the other, oh, will God. have to be resolved before Nick, De uh, before excuse me, Ziff Davis is going to have any interest in in taking uh, taking possession of it, and uh, yeah, that's basically how it went down. Um, will, would this make you think twice about publishing a sex tape 
online as tech tips. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why would we publish a sex tape online? Sex tape? I, I didn't say we. I said you. So we should, okay, no, we should do this, but we should do it with like, uh, like computer components. Oh man! We should like make a fake Hulk Hogan. <laughs> no. I want and have it water cool someone else's computer. I want no part. Of, I want no part of any of this. I just want. We've got people asking for us to review a sex bot. Okay, now, let's hey, talk. Taren hold on, does hold our on. robots. Let's talk. Taryn does our robots. Yeah, but Taryn wouldn't know what to do with a sex bot. <laughs> so let's talk. Let's talk seriously again for a minute. Would you do an objective review of a sex robot? Uh, okay. I, I mean, we'd have to be careful what we show in B-roll and not in B-roll. Right. But would you would you benchmark it and host the video? I think I think like the 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 journalistic side of me is like yeah, and then there's like I'm in a relationship. No. So. But what if the I think is it cheating if it's review, a robot? Probably. Is it? Like because I, I mean they're not that sophisticated at this point. Uh, yeah, at this point. I think basically not. they just do pre-programmed phrases. But you phrases. are attempting to cuz this this ties into another conversation which is like is porn okay while you're in a relationship? And this is like stuff you need to decide in your relationship. Yeah, I'm, this I'm not is, saying as a general statement. I mean with you and your partner you need to decide. Yes. Is porn okay? And then on top of that is VR porn okay? Because they're actually Pretty very different. different. Right. Yeah. VR porn is very much putting you in that scenario yeah. with like like uh, directional audio so you feel like you're there and like if the person's talking to you, you can hear where it's coming from. Like all right. that like crazy stuff. Yeah. Which is like on another level. And then you're stepping up again. You think so? I think each one of those will reduce so an amount of people that are okay. You with don't that. think actually I I would I would argue I would argue the other way. So I think porn is where it is. So okay. we both let's establish that porn is a baseline. Okay. And you know your baseline could be it's like super okay and mine could be it's super not okay or the Doesn't other way matter. around. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Let's call two dimensional porn the baseline. Sure. And let's talk like two dimensional like is like straight, on a screen. Let's no. talk. Let's talk like straight guy on girl. If you're a straight person, like 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 vanilla porn, like sure. Not like animals or whatever. Sure. Because you I wasn't could, really oh, okay. Like I'm thinking, like two two dimensional, like just kind of vanilla porn. What whatever fits in your preferences. Yeah. Be, yeah. Like whatever would be vanilla for you. Everyone's sure. vanilla can be a little different. You yeah. know, chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. We're talking vanilla, okay? So that's our baseline. Okay. I would make the argument that a robot is actually less akin to a real life sexual experience than. I see where VR. you're coming from with that, but you also have problems where... And certainly less than uh, than toy-assisted VR. Toy-assisted VR is way up there. Um, with the robot, though, you are directly trying to replace the person in the actions that they do. And it is possible to get somewhat emotionally attached to a robot. Mm -hmm. So, like, you are actually attempting to replace... The functionality of the partner. Yeah. Which is also why VR toy assisted would probably... Would that uh, top the robot for you? I don't know. They're both like... So these are both like no zone for you. This is really awkward. Uh... Well, no, remember, we're talking when you're in a relationship. And remember, your no zone can be sort of what you're comfortable with someone else engaging in while you're in a relationship with yeah, them. I like it goes as a two-way street. Yeah. So, so are both of those gray area at the very least to say yeah. to say? Okay. So Would need both. like a discussion, blah, 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 Okay. Blah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. See, I... How did we get here? I don't know. <laughs> but I, 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 I wholly disagree. Okay. I think that the robot... And in, okay. I, and I'm saying inanimate object. I understand that not all of them are completely inanimate. Um, some of them like blink and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I would make the argument that an inanimate object is less like a real experience than an actor on a screen. Uh, 
But it's not happening directly to you. That's true. This is something but nothing's like, happening to you. I mean, let's face it, you're doing all the work in either scenario. <laughs> that might be true in relationships as well, though. Wow, shots fired. I, not even. I'm sorry to hear that, bro. That, no, <laughs> no, that's not true at all. But I'm saying for some people, that is a reality. It's, it's, I'm sorry, but like, it is okay, for some people. Okay, sure. Fair enough. People are saying next topic, and they're probably, probably right. Fair, yeah, yeah. Um, what is next topic? Sony officially confirms the 4K ready PlayStation. Excellent. So original article here is from The Verge. Confirms a PS4 console upgrade, but it won't be at E3, which mm. raises the question, what will be at E3? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> People were asking me like at Combitex and stuff. They were like, you've done E3 before. Are you going this year? I was like, nope. Like, oh, why not? It's because we're not. Nothing. Well, you know what's funny is we missed a year when E3 was like the shit. Yeah. And then we were like, okay, we'll do it next year. But the problem is that we're not in the console mindset. Like, we don't even understand <laughs> what qualifies as like a big E3 for yeah. console people because yeah. it's all just kind of E3. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, all the consoles are launching this year. We don't go. <laughs> the next year, all the consoles launched last year. We go. And it's like, here's some game with. It's games with some tessellation or something. But the problem is, even if we oh. did go the previous year, uh, it was probably just keynotes. Wasn't it just keynotes? Like, I'm pretty sure we just watched those in the office. I remember, like, talking yeah. to you because we were both scripting and half watching at the same time. Like, we basically more or less went, just virtually, not to tie back to the previous conversation. Yeah, I mean, on that subject, man, I went to, uh, I think, two one, keynotes. Right? Yeah, two keynotes at Computex this year. I went to one. Let's just not do them anymore. Yep. They are the worst thing ever. Yep. There is nothing that I can learn in a keynote that I can't learn and like, by... Yeah, I don't know. The, the most valuable thing I think we could do from a keynote, um, and the, the keynote that I went to was an NVIDIA one. And what I did was I just Periscope live streamed the whole thing. Which, like... Mm -hmm. I did that because I don't think it was being live streamed. Right. The the stream that I did uh, Twitch stream of at the NVIDIA event when I didn't have a table and was like crammed in these tiny freaking seats in the back trying to hold my camera up while supporting my laptop was horrible. I don't even really know why people watched. I tried to like, I tried to even get reactions from like Jay and the other people that are sitting beside me and I'd turn the camera and the HDMI cable would disconnect because <laughs> it wasn't a very stable connection. Um, but there's like live tweets. But then we don't have to be there in order to do that. Right. I don't know. Um, so this is actually this is actually sort of uh, an ongoing an ongoing scandal. So I don't know if some of you have seen it, but SourceFed is claiming that Google manipulated search results um, in favor of Hillary Clinton. It's actually a very well constructed video, a very compelling sounding argument. For, uh, for, for how big this has become, I'm surprised it doesn't have way more views. Yeah, it's actually only got about a quarter million views. Let's go ahead and pop that up on our screen here. So they basically say, okay, look, uh, here's the popularity of certain um, search terms. For example, Hillary Clinton indictment and Hillary Clinton India. You can see indictment is uh, much more popular than India, uh, according to Google's own interest over time. And they point out that when you actually enter Hillary Clinton ind into Google search, it comes up with Indiana, India, independent voters, Indiana campaign, absolutely nothing about indictment as a suggested search, with the argument being made by SourceFed being that you should be suggesting search topics based on autocomplete based on what people are actually searching for that would start with those letters um so this is this is very quickly turning into and they, they, they also showed like i think it was yahoo and bing typing the exact same thing in and yep. yahoo and bing reacted the exact same way that they would have expected yeah so indictment was the top uh, suggested. With that said, I wouldn't use Bing search as an indication yep. of what is relevant necessarily, although they make, again, a good point. It's a very well-constructed video, actually. I watched the whole thing start to finish, and I was like, wow, that was very cogent. Um, anyway, 
So they make the argument that if there's three people in a room, and I think it went something along, don't quote me on this again, three people in a room and one of them says, I'm in a room, and two of them say, I'm on, the room's on fire. You know, you should probably go with the two people who are saying, hey, the room's on fire and not the person that is. Uh, what's relevant information, I guess, is the point. Um, now, the defense. up on the verge already, Google denies, oh, and there's, there's, like, there's like a whole like, um, Illuminati thing about how um, Larry Page uh, funded or owns a company that well, I think that the Clinton part's campaign. True. No, no, it's true. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, to be clear, I'm not saying Illuminati confirmed like you know, uh, Mr. Peanut and, on the and it's, peanut butter and it's, jar, the yeah, American and it, and dad. It's not like, the Illuminati. Yeah. It's, it's this like tech-based company that Larry Page is funding that is yes. helping Hillary's campaign. That is being uh, contracted by Hillary's campaign, something to the tune of $177,000 in a quarter, which sounds like a lot of money to normal people like you and me, but this is important right now. In the context of Larry Page, that means nothing. He probably keeps that amount of money in every pair of shoes in the event that he gets robbed and he needs to, you know, grab some money for walking around out of somewhere that the robber wouldn't have gotten it from. Yeah. And we're back. Illuminati freaking confirmed. You were waiting on that the whole time, weren't you? Hillary Clinton showed up outside the door yeah. of our warehouse, yeah. walked in with like armed guards behind her, dressed in black, and told us, well, not us, told our computer, yeah. you blue screen right now, or we are not walking out of this place. Yeah. And it did. It happened. Josh was there. <laughs> okay, so the last thing happened, our computer blue screen, I'm not really sure what the deal was with that, something to do with attempted switch from DPC, which is something to do with maybe a real tech wireless driver, we don't have any real tech or, devices or, in this or, computer. Or mini card, we, or, it seems to be like one of those yeah, catch-all dump Don't codes. We don't have any of those, that's, that's for sure. So, let's get back into, um, into what, what I was talking about, what the hell was I talking about before? Okay. Um, so, right, uh, medium dot, oh, where was I going with this? Okay, so, The Verge has, uh, The Verge has a good, uh, follow-up that basically says, Google denies altering search suggestions for Hillary Clinton and points out that some of the examples that source-fed sites, uh, for example, uh, Hillary Clinton CRI, doesn't come up with crime, in fact apply across the board. Google avoids auto-completing the word crime or criminal um, so that they can avoid um, making disparaging comments about people who may not have actually committed a crime or may not be a criminal. In fact, they do, so they, they've pointed this out. This is, uh, who's this guy? Matt Cutts is the currently on leave from his position as head of Google's web spam team. Um, so so they do this for everyone else, including people that have actually been charged and convicted. Very interesting. Um, he also points out that those looking for negative stories don't yeah. necessarily type Hillary's last name. They actually mostly search, apparently, for Hillary. I don't Hillary. entirely know why he would know this if he's on leave. No, you might still. Well, you might still know enough about the inner workings to come up with some examples that demonstrate the opposite the, being well, true. Well, okay, the first part, totally. The the part where they're all looking for Hillary, not Hillary Clinton, is like, what? Well, you can look for that, though. Um, like, you can search for relevance. Like, you can search for um, yeah, how hot a search it is. Yeah, but showed yes, they that did. people were searching for that. So, basically, uh, oh, and the, so another thing they pointed out is that uh, many results pop in when you type in Donald Trump racist, but results also appear for Hillary Clinton racist. Mm -hmm. Um... So there you go. So basically the conclusion in the Verge article here is they're likely trying to walk the line between providing as much information as they can and not stepping into a sort of gray legal area by, say, suggesting that someone could be a criminal. Um, so here's a, state, a spokesperson's full statement on the matter. Google autocomplete does not favor any candidate or cause. Claims to the contrary simply misunderstand how if autocomplete you works. If you type in Donald Trump RAC. Yeah. It comes with, with Donald Trump racist. If you type Hillary Clinton RAC, it comes with Rachel race issue, Rachel Maddow race 2016. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that is a regional thing as well. 
Yeah, Donald Trump RAC, racist SNL, racist commercial, racist articles, racist rally. It's all racist. I don't know that racism is necessarily a hot button topic for Hillary. I doubt it. I'm just saying that was said in there. Yeah, that's and very interesting. Doesn't seem true. So here, hold on. We should we should probably do the demo live if we're going to sure. uh, if we're going to talk about this. So Hillary. I don't even necessarily know because like. So there you have it. Uh, so racist costume is my sick fifth fifth suggestion. All right, mine only goes down to four. <laughs> Browser thing probably. Oh no, oh, no I'm actually on the resolution thing or like. Uh, uh, Zoom thing. I'm actually on Google's website too. You're doing the browser suggestions. Okay, so there you go. Oh, okay. So, no, no, yep. So, no, look at. So that's a browser yeah. thing. Yeah. Because I'm in Firefox, you're in Chrome. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. There you go. So, age email young news. News Twitter wife Donald Glover. Okay. Let's help it out a little bit. <laughs> News Twitter wife net worth. So there's nothing particularly incriminating there, but it looks like as you continue to dig in and find examples, you can find stuff that um, appears to be a bit of an issue. So there is an article over on medium.com that appears to have been done without help from Google. So here we go. Um, search trends are a significant factor in how autocomplete works. This is the entire basis for SourceFed's claim, and yet according to their logic, Google must be favoring Donald Trump as well, because they've got Donald Trump RA completely leaves out the quite common search term Donald Trump rape, um, which was the whole alleged thing with uh, Ivana Trump, where she eventually took back the statement, but she claimed that he raped her. So. Oh. I guess I didn't follow that closely enough. Yeah, so Donald Trump LA. Okay, so we've got Donald Trump lawsuits and Donald Trump laughing. What does it come with? Comes latest with news. Latest news, latest last night laughing. What the heck? So at this point, you're probably thinking, this is a great point. At this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, whoa, you're just choosing random words and searching them. And he's like, yeah, that's right. I'm doing exactly well, that what That totally makes sense. Did. Yeah. Which does make sense. So I can definitely see how SourceFed came to the conclusion they did because you right there, sitting there, were like, well, hold on a second, what about this? This conflicts with that, remembering that we're in a different region, and I know that Google does specifically yeah, target yeah, suggestions yeah, yeah. region by region. Uh, so outside of America, you might get very, very different types of suggestions to do with any of the presidential candidates um, th versus someone who's actually in the US. So do I believe that Google is 100% ethical? No. Do I believe that they would be stupid this enough might not be a targeted thing. to this do something this blatant? Right. Um, no. I, 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 I think this would be really dumb. I also have a really hard time believing that Hillary Clinton is necessarily the candidate that like, Google as a whole would have decided is like ideal. Um, so I mean, she I mean, seems pretty impressionable. Better than Trump, I guess. No, I, that's such a. <laughs> yeah, that's a can of worms. I actually, this is interesting. I had um, sort of changing topics. I had dinner uh, at Computex with uh, like a self-professed, like die-hard Trump supporter, and um, basically the conversation went something along the lines of, "We're like, where's the tech talk? This is tech, by the way." Just saying. The Google stuff, yeah. Yeah, the Google stuff. And what I'm telling you about right now was a conversation I had at Computex. Tech is right in there. Um, so basically, he he like was just out of absolutely nowhere. We were talking about something to do with AMD's strategy for Fire Pro cards and distribution channels or something like that. It was a legitimately tech conversation. And then he goes, something, 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 you know, my boy Donald, something, something, something. And uh, my boy Donald. And then he's like, well, and we were like, oh, okay, so you're a Trump supporter, like as if it was not obvious at that point. And he goes, yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. Of course I am. And why? What are you? I'm like, well, I'm Canadian. He's like, oh, you're a socialist then. I'm like, well, you know what? A, not necessarily yeah. uh, to, for one thing. And B, um, who cares? Yeah. Because at a business dinner, the last thing that I'm going to be talking about is socialism for Donald Trump. <laughs> That is like completely inappropriate. <laughs> so, so yeah, 
But yeah. uh, hey, he's not afraid to speak his mind, just like his boy Donald. So I'll give him that. <laughs> um, however inappropriate or appropriate it might be. Weren't we supposed to be talking about the 4K ready PlayStation? Yeah, I have no no idea how we got How there. did we I think get we stopped. There. No, I think we stopped. I think we were done. No, no, we never made it past the headline. We talked about E3 and going no, because, to E3. No, because I saw this over here and I realized it wasn't uh, on the dock. Yeah, we never got no, there. No, I'm going through what we did talk about. We talked about yeah. E3, we talked about going to E3 and why we don't anymore and yeah. we suck at that. And so we said it won't be at E3, keynotes. which yeah. was in the headline. Yeah. And then we're like, we won't be at E3 either. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the PlayStation 4 oh. console upgrade. To be clear, it, there doesn't seem to be any indication that this is an upgrade in the sense that you can upgrade your existing console. It looks right. like there will be an upgraded PlayStation 4 that will include a faster processor, 4K resolutions. Oh man, I got such a kick out of the endless, endless PlayStation fanboys back at the time of launch that were like, yeah, 4K support's coming. Actually, it's not. Actually, it isn't because Whoa. because actually the HDMI port on the PlayStation is not going to output it. You so, can pay for one. So there's that. Um, yeah. So technically, 4K sport is coming to PlayStation. Yes, yeah, so if you buy a completely new device, just not yours. Um, uh, it'll offer 4K resolution support and improved graphics. Presumably, it will also have support for PlayStation VR. Although I don't know. If PlayStation VR is going to be supported on the existing PlayStation 4, do you know this? No, I don't know this. Hmm. That has been an interesting... Why are your things, like, off your screen? That's weird. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if that's a known thing. On uh, PS4. Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually don't know. So $500 head-mounted display, blah, 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 blah. Upcoming virtual reality headset for the PS4 console. But what's interesting is that the only confirmation that we have is that there will be an upgraded PS4. They're not actually calling it something else. Yeah. So if they said PS VR is for the PlayStation 4, I mean, if this is like a, oh man, because there has been some confusing stuff that's gone on in console generations before, you know, mini versions and, you know, cooler running versions and Halo versions and, and all kinds of different, different stuff that actually in some cases can have very different hardware and software limitations. I mean, early PlayStation 3s had backwards compatibility with hardware. And you can install Linux on them. They're actually still really cool. And then that completely got kicked in. Yeah, those things are worth money on eBay. They are, because you can make them computers. Like, there's a... Isn't there, like, a military data center or server or something that's PlayStation 3s? I, I think it's, like, defunct now. But I'm like, sure, but, like, okay. It was a thing, It wasn't though. there, I mean... Um, it might have just been experimental. That's also very possible. Anyway, the console will be priced higher than the current $350 for the existing PS4, and it will be better. Um, so there you go. And speaking of things that will be better, all of our talking points for Squarespace. Yay. So, we are no longer allowed to say. You should. Or build it beautiful. So, so we need a moment of why. silence. Yeah. Squarespace offers 24-7 support via live chat and email. They feature responsive design on all of their website templates, which means your website will look great on any device. They've got Commerce, a free online store that is available with every website, whether you want to sell, like, you know, Etsy-type crafts or, um, you know, fish or whatever the case may I'm be. I'm not actually going to say anything. I'm just trying to keep it the same. <laughs> You know what? We could probably make this work. And if... You should? No, no, you're not supposed to say it. And if... If... No, hold on. But... Hmm. No, I can't. I can't. I thought maybe I could make it so that the you should could be implied, but the sentence would actually work without it. But okay, I don't so, think well, I can. Right. Oh, I'm like sad now. Yeah. Cover See, pages... I was trying to do like the thing... So that, like, we would only take part of it away from them, and then we could, like, slowly wean it off over time. Cover Pages is a feature that allows you to set up a beautiful one-page online presence in minutes. You can start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today 
when you decide to sign up, make sure you use offer code WAN to get 10% off your first purchase. So uh, thanks to Squarespace for supporting the WAN show. You should keep doing it. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, also in the lineup today is iFixit. iFixit is probably the sponsor, the actual legitimate sponsor that actually sponsors the show. There, there are closer ones. If you're looking for a kit, they're like right there. There's an entire bin of them right there. iFixit is probably the sponsor who actually sponsors the show that I get accused of like, of like discreetly working in product placements for more often than any other because I legitimately use our iFixit stuff all the time. iFixit.com is your complete DIY electronics repair solution. From their, yeah, over there, that's what I said. See, he's going over there now. From their 19,000 free step-by-step -step repair guides to their huge inventory of replacement parts and tools. We've used iFixit stuff for everything from screwdrivers for taking stuff apart to suction cups for taking stuff apart to, um, well, like more better screwdrivers for taking stuff apart to lots of different bits for the screw. These are actually, this is like an old kit too, but we've got like tons of iFixit. It's funny, the old kit is the one we have here because I took the new one home. I know. It's got more driver bits, it's got That's the one better, I was looking for. Yeah, better spudgers, it's That's got why I went the wrong one. more suction cups, it's just generally like super awesome. Uh, we've ordered replacement parts from them for putting the iMac uh, the 5k iMac that I reviewed back together after I opened it up in order to take it apart for some reason Why did I think that was a good idea? Anyway, I took it apart and put it back together and all their tools are backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty The ProTech toolkit the good one that I can't show you because it's at home is $69.95 and the best part is you can get 10 bucks. Oh, no. Nope. Ah, my talking points are wrong five bucks off on a purchase of ten dollars or more my talking points are exactly correct i just saw the 10 and i jumped the gun there speaking of jumping the gun i have a link to the cooler master store here that i am supposed to follow ah yes my friends so cmstore-usa.com has all kinds of interesting stuff everything from cooler master and uh, basically, yes, everything from Cooler Master. A lot of it's their freeform modular stuff. Expected so, to find there. Like, if you saw the Cooler Master uh, cool. video from uh, Computex, you would have seen some of these things already. So those things are made by Primo Chill, actually. Yeah. So these are little like you can change the look of the front of your case and the uh, power supply basement area to this like crazy blue thing. If that's not your style. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do. You can get official stuff from Cooler Master too, which includes like the this crazy handle on the top of the case. This um, actually ties in really well to the thing that I was criticizing about Asus's concept PC that they had at the show. That, uh, that one that all assembles with hard PCBs. Um, and the problem is that they were like, oh yeah, we'll have like modular upgrades for uh, rear IO so that an older motherboard could have like USB type C and you would just have this module that you slot in. And I was like, well, by the time the distributor and the retailer and the shipper, remember you have to get it to a distributor, then to a retailer, then to the customer, all take their cut. These things are gonna be inordinately expensive. You might as well just buy a new motherboard. And Wouldn't you like, need a controller for that too? Um, the controller is actually in the like upgrade module That's what thing. I'm saying, so it's gonna be really expensive. Yeah, so, so well, okay, so the product manager for the claims it wasn't, but I was like, yes it will. Sure. Um, <laughs> So Cooler Master by stocking, because that's been a big problem for cases too. I bought a windowed side panel for an Antec P160. So that was 12 years ago. Um, anyway, so I did that. It took like five weeks to special order because there was like one in the entire country and that's the way it was then and that's the way it is today when it comes to accessories for computer cases because you just can't stock enough of them in all the right distribution areas in order to have timely fulfillment of those orders be possible. And that was a windowed side panel. I mean, it's a relatively common thing. We're not talking like, like a freaking, you know, like slashed like front panel thing. So I actually see Cooler Master's, Cooler Master's store as an interesting solution to that problem because Cooler Master themselves is handling this. doesn't have to stock a ton of them. Yeah. 
they can just say, okay, let, we'll stock five. And it how cool matter, or ten. does it is they buy the things from the makers and then resell them too. Which is pretty cool. So that you know that like Cooling Master is tracking their stock and like all this other kind of stuff, which actually makes sense. So I think it's pretty cool. So the other thing we're supposed to mention, I guess, is the, um, uh, the Master Case Maker 5. So make it what you will. I know, Luke, you especially had a lot of skepticism in your brain and in your heart and probably in your pants about Cooler Master's whole maker branding. And there are still some products. Here, we're still doing a Cooler Master sponsor spot, but I'm not afraid to criticize them during a sponsor spot. There are still some Cooler Master products that I look at the maker branding and I just go, like, what, what exactly is maker about this? Yeah. But I've got to give them the vision for the case. At CES, they announced that they were going to have this store. Here we are six months later. They have products in it. So they are working on it. They are trying to make it actually, like, maker in some way. Yeah, so, I don't understand how, like, uh, beautiful, honestly, looking power supply uh, happens to be maker. But I do appreciate that they did follow up on the store thing. I, I, I like it probably would have helped if I said it in the original video, but the first time I covered their freeform modular system stuff yeah. was last Computex, not the most recent one. And I gave them like a year or whatever, and I talked right. to you about it not that long ago. Yeah. Going, where is that? Where is that store thing? Because yeah. it's not here yet. And then it showed up like three weeks or a month before yep. Computex or something. And I was like, all right, okay. Okay, all right. You made it, not by much, but yeah. you made it. But we'll give you that one, Cooler yeah. Master. You made it. Get it? Yep. You made I it. Get, I got it. Beautiful. Yep, make it beautiful. <laughs> Make, maker it beautiful. All right, let's talk about beautiful community interaction. The original article here is from Engadget. Riot used League of Legends chat logs to spot bad staff, apparently looking closely at what employees say online. It's a good thing I don't do that, or Ed probably wouldn't have a job anymore. <laughs> So Riot Games looked at employees' chat logs and found a correlation between their oh. behavior in and out of game. They worked with Google's work staff analytics team and picked through the last 12 months of wow. each staffer's League of Legends gameplay records and chat logs. They found that a quarter of the people they had fired in the last year, so they had fired prior to knowing, had shown unusually high levels of toxic behavior in game. Armed with this information, Riot used it to proactively address the problem with remaining staff. So they singled out 30 employees, all of whom were actually fairly new to the company and gave them two options. Those who got a stern warning and those who should be let go. And then during the meetings, many employees expressed regret at how they behaved in game. Uh, they received essays from employees vowing to change their ways and the the report ended with Riot's intention to request League of Legends usernames from all future hires for similar analysis. So yeah, like social media investigation by potential and current employers just got real. Very, very real. Like I wouldn't be, and you know what, it's, it's funny because if you'd asked me yesterday, what is social media? I would have said, oh, I don't know, Twitter, Facebook, yeah, yeah. YouTube. Um, and a lot of people don't even think of YouTube. Like, I only think of it because YouTube is my primary social platform. Um, thing? A lot of people don't think of it. Yeah, yeah, I guess because you, yeah, okay. A lot of people watch a video. Yeah. I mean, what percentage leave a comment under the video? It, it feels more like a TV viewing thing yes. instead of a intercommunication thing like yes. Twitter and Facebook. But it absolutely is. Yeah, for it sure. is a social media platform. Yeah. Um, not saying it isn't. I would not have said the game I played last Saturday night. No. Boom. So let's get a straw poll going on here. Like, oh, straw poll is what Riot did okay. Oh. And I'm not putting in turnip because I. This is like the requesting kind of, of a big deal usernames? here. Usernames. Seems a little weird, does it not? For future employees? Okay, so before we before we get into the answer to that question, um, let me say this. When I applied at NCIX, I actually went out of my way to include my forum username yeah, so they well, could okay. review 
my posting history on their site. I'm not going to say who, but uh, certain people on like the forum and certain people that I know through Twitch and stuff yeah. have included their handles for the Linus Tech Tips forum for certain jobs that they have gotten and that has been part of it. So I, really? I see, for other jobs? Yeah. I, I actually do totally um, see... Does one of them have the initial CC? Fairly prominent member? Real initials? Oh, uh, I'll talk to you later. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm idly curious. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Oh, I, have okay. no, I have no problem telling you, but I'll talk to you later. Okay. Um, and like, it's worked and it's helped them. And I understand the voluntary giving of those things. Yeah. And like, having Riot be like, it's a good thing if you give us your username is probably, I, I just, I think it's, because aren't there certain legal requirements like, about what you're even allowed to ask like for you in can an interview? You can spin it both ways. I, I sincerely doubt a gamer handle is even covered. But I could see Riot spinning I, yeah. it both ways. Because they could spin it to every candidate this way. If you give us your League of Legends username, it enables us to help you, the good candidate, get a job. Mm -hmm. But the implication, the implied backside of that story is that it helps weed out potential jackasses during the interview process. So, so some questions that you can't ask is what is your re religious affiliation? Are you pregnant? What is your political affiliation? What is your race, color, or ethnicity? Although if you're in an interview, uh, anyways. How Sometimes it's not obvious. Sure. Most people think my wife is, uh, I think I get a lot of people saying she might be Filipina, but she's oh. not. Sure. Um, that's a good point. How old are you? Are you disabled? Are you married? Do you have uh, children or plan to? Uh, are you in debt? Do you sm drink or smoke? Socially. Socially, I guess. Um, it so, doesn't actually say socially. So yeah. in that... Oh, social drink, yeah. So in that sense, if Riot asks for your username, they could... Because they could very indirectly get the answer to, like, everything there. They could get the answers to pretty much all of that. Especially because that probably includes whispers. <sighs> what if it doesn't, though? Let's say it doesn't. Let's assume... Let's assume... Let's, let's give the benefit of the doubt. Let's say it doesn't include whispers. Right. Okay? So let's say it only includes public chat. But by the time you post that information on a public server... Have you, Are you forfeiting? Yeah, have you have you but put that information on your forehead? No, because there's also implied anonymity mm -hmm. through your username. You're not playing right. as minus Sebastian. Right. You're playing as whatever. I do because I give up, but sure. Yeah, but like, okay, you know what I mean though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I give up too. Um, I don't actually use my real name, but yeah, yeah. I, I give up. Uh, I Twitch stream. What am I supposed to do? Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. Okay, so let's let's hear from the viewers. This is split pretty much right down the middle. Yeah, I saw that. We've got 53% of you saying it's okay. Riot has the right to know what you... And you know what? It might be in their EULA somewhere. Riot has the right to know before you work for them... That's our neighbor. What uh, you posted on their privately owned servers. Which is an interesting point. Riot probably has terms in their EULA that entitle them to ownership of everything that gets posted in much the same way that LinusTechTips.com sure. owns anything you post on it. Sure, but through the end user license that doesn't have to do with you forfeiting the information of your username. Right, but you knowingly and willingly posted that with maybe you figured you were anonymous, but you weren't, according to the end user license agreement. You willingly and knowingly posted that publicly. Yeah, yeah, but so it, it's still it's still not forfeiting your username because you could falsify your personal data that's true when signing up but if the eula says you're not allowed to do that eulas also don't hold up like ever that's true they don't but if riot's company policy is that all employees subject to termination if they fail to comply need to, need follow, to follow, the follow the eula but can you can you go around let's say if there was, I'm going into theoreticals here. Yeah. If that list of stuff that I just said included gamer tag for whatever reason, would circumventing that by saying that they have to follow the EULA, is that legal? I guess John... And it, I don't think it comes know. down to legality or not legality because ultimately you can, you can control what an employee posts on your privately owned servers as a company. 
Yeah, it's not about control, though. This is reading the last 12 months. Right, so going back yeah. and looking at it. Well, ultimately... Because there could be a code of conduct within the company where yep. you have to act this certain way. Yeah, like Costco has on... a code of ethics. Yeah, They have, like, an entire handbook. It's, like, this thick. It's like, here's, uh, you know, here's the value up to which you can accept a, a dinner from someone. Here's this, that, 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 and that. Um, you know, you know what's funny is I have actually kind of talked myself into it. You're also uh, an employer. No, but even outside of that. Because while I, because we've talked about this before. Yeah. And I don't remember what stance I took, but, you know, Whatever. Viewpoints well, we change. have, uh, to give some insight, we yeah. have uh, what not do necessarily we have? changed opinions, but, but added information to what we thought about a person that was going through an interview process with us by looking at their social media. Yes. Oh. Long time ago, you were in on that. Did I? Was I? It was their Twitter account. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This, so was, a, this was a long time ago. Did the they Twitter tweet account, at us? I, I think the Twitter account was, was given to us. Okay. So it was given to us. Yeah. Okay. But we clearly have no problem looking at social media for things. Now, with that said... I personally don't really like this. The reason why I don't really like this is because of the implied anonymity of your username. If you post something on Twitter or to a public Facebook account, that yeah. is very searchable and is directly attached to your name. I think, of course, that's searchable by your employer. I don't think you have to forfeit those accounts, but they're under your name and are searchable, so whatever. So I don't like the idea of creeping something that wasn't provided. Yeah. Especially if it's a third party. So if Riot was saying you have to provide your Facebook username, because I've heard of employers demanding this. You have to, you have to, you know, what's your Facebook? Yeah. And we, are, we intend to look at it. Like if they demanded that, that's one thing. And that to me is actually very different from demanding to know what potential employees or current employees, because they only did this for current employees and then the potential employees is moving forward now. So they did this for current There's employees. Also, yeah. What your current employees are posting on a server you own. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's also a different thing because it's their platform. And I could definitely see, this, this might change my opinion a little bit, because it's their platform, that's like how they are treading on your turf. Yeah, already. it's how they are representing was, your brand. I was applying this to like any gamer tag. Right. So like if you played WoW and League of Legends, they would want to have both of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's but, but not they what they're asking. Have, for. No, I know because they wouldn't have the ability to do that anyway. Right. So, but I think that would be more wrong okay. anyway. Yeah, I think so too. I think yeah. what a, an employee. The treading on your turf, wanting to know your stuff for your own servers. I actually totally yeah. see that. The, if if someone wanted to apply to work here and we're on the forum, I would want to know what their account was and yep. I would want to see how they conducted themselves yep. on the forum. I wouldn't ask for their other accounts. So right. I actually, I guess I do agree with it. I just don't agree with it as a, a, a gamer tag in general. A gamer tag in general feels like it should just be, this is my escapism land. Yeah, that's, that's what, why that's I, what I was trying to defend. It's your anonymous area. You should just be and able to And sometimes you role play. That's a thing. Role playing is a thing. How I behave as a gamer tag shouldn't necessarily be the be all and end all of someone how of how someone interprets who I am and what I am as a person. But I also see where Riot's coming from, which yes. is if you're role playing an asshole they to the community of our paying customers. Who you're trying to apply for and will be representing in some way or another. Yeah. Who you're ultimately serving at your like freaking and day job that we pay Riot, you for. Riot is gonna want someone who uh, well, like compared to a negative person, they would want someone who's trying to make the community better yeah. because that's the exact same kind of deal as the person in the interview uh, who is actively trying to find ways and offer up ways that they could improve the company and who have pre-thought about these things. Like like the, the, the standard thing, like if you're applying for a social media position, being yep. like, oh, I have these ideas for improving your social media situation yep. because I've already looked at what you're doing and analyzed what you're doing and thought about it and tried these practices and whatnot. That's a very good thing to bring to that interview. Um, bring to that interview that 
you obviously didn't care and are contributing to a toxic environment. It's not a Twitch Place Pokemon says, someone was role-playing at me real hard in an Overwatch match I played last night. <laughs> We're not saying that role-playing an asshole is okay. No. We're just saying that... I think we specifically didn't. Yeah, it might not necessarily be who you are as a person. Yeah. Um, okay. Team Viewer confirms number of abused user accounts is significant. Uh, so the original article here is from bleepingcomputer.com. They apologize, but they still say they were not compromised, which is something that has yet to be actually proven, even though Redditors and some blogs out there have offered up some evidence that looks fairly compelling to suggest that they were indeed compromised. So, uh, what? Well, they were definitely compromised. The, the well, question okay, is yes. whether or not... Team Viewer... Was compromised, yeah. Like, their records yeah, that, that's the were question. compromised. Yeah. Um, but Team Viewer accounts... Were definitely compromised. Were definitely compromised. So, the suggested course of action it, right now is to protect your accounts with secure passwords that are frequently changed, have reliable anti-malware and security solutions in place at all times, and enable two-factor authentication. That's what TeamViewer is suggesting. Um, there's other stuff that you can do. Uh, the way that I was once compromised, well, not, not me personally, I've never been compromised. I'm not compromising. <laughs> not, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Anyway, the, re the way the Linus Tech Tips channel was compromised was through a keylogger. Um, where I did not have two-factor authentication enabled because I don't remember if it was available yet. I doubt it was back then. It was a long time ago. Anyway, um, so through a keylogger, so one of the other ways that you can avoid getting your password sniped by a keylogger is by having something like a password keeper, like LastPass, for That's example. That's one thing that people are questioning is they're yep. saying, I had a two-step enabled and they still got in. We don't have any confirmations of these things, but hearing that is bad. Um, yeah. One one thing that I'm going to say is uh, not to bring this up again, but quite a while ago we had a breach on the Linus Tech Tips forum, which super mega sucked. Um, and even if that wasn't our fault, you still have to kind of uh, be a little more proactive. You should probably, considering this is an exploit that's going against your software, Sure, their breach isn't your fault, but it's still an exploit that is widely, significantly going against your software. You should probably inform your users yep. that this could be a problem. Suggest password suggest changes password proactively, changes. proactively through an Su email. Suggest two-step. They have my email address. It's One not thing like that they can't we did was like busted our email reputation by making sure that we hammered emails out as fast as we could to all of our users to let yeah, them know. Yeah, which actually hurt us in the longer stuff. term. No one from Hot, no one at a Microsoft domain got an email from us for months. For a very long time. <sighs> Including password reset emails. Yeah, which was a nightmare. Thanks, Microsoft. We were just trying to help people. And then they ignored us for months with trying to get... Anyway. Uh, anyways. Um, so pretty much <sighs> the way the attack works is people are breaking into your team viewer, into your computer with team viewer, and then they are using presumably saved passwords on your computer. Please don't do that. Um, for example, if you have a password keeper, I don't understand why this isn't a default option. But actually, while you're in your next security audit, can you run around and make sure everyone has it set to timeout after a very short period of time? Make sure your password keeper times out, like for the love of everything that is valuable to you. Time out your password keeper. That's like the whole point. So what they're doing is they're going into, whether it's you're using Chrome to save your passwords, which by the way is really stupid, um, or Firefox to save your passwords, which by the way is even super stupider because it saves it, it in plain actually, text yeah. in a file in like data, roaming, local, whatever it is. Um, what was I? Oh yeah. So then they're using your safe passwords to drain your bank account and your PayPal which there's not a whole lot that um, anyone can do about once it's done, if the action was effectively done by you. <sighs> um, right, we've got a lot of topics left, some of which I like really did want to uh, like what? talk about real quick here. Um, where'd it go? Um, uh, where, where did it go? Up? Maybe up? No, I've had like for. I had something I really wanted to what do. It, like what tied it? into the Team Viewer one. I had like a segue and everything, and it's completely not in my mind anymore. This? 
No. Okay. Uh, no, it was cool. This? No, that's cool too, but not not as cool. Um. Oh well. This? Oh, this? No. Oh, that ties in. Yeah, no, and no, it was like something else. Like it might not have actually. Oh, made this. It into the dock. Uh, oh yeah. Wait, no, no, this. Oh, this apparently got rejected. I why? don't know. Why? I don't know why. Uh, why did that get rejected? Um, I don't know. I actually don't know. Requested for blah 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 blah. Um. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know why it was rejected, so I'm not gonna go too far into it. But uh, Twitch troll donates fifty thousand dollars to streamers. PayPal allegedly refuses to refund. Maybe we don't actually have confirmation on whether PayPal yeah. is refunding it or not. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Nick, Nick is Nick is filling it in for me. Conflicting reports. Okay. So I was going to try and tie that in. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for the WAN show. I do want to do a call out for Nerd Sports, guys. If you haven't already, uh, check it out over on Vessel. They offer a seven-day free trial. Night vision. Ah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, they offer a seven-day free trial where you can see uh, Linus Tech Tips, Tech Quickie, and Channel Super Fun content seven days ahead of time, uh, as well as a bunch of other creators. And it should also be noted that Nerd Sports, uh, all five episodes of which are up there, and for whatever reason, not particularly searchable. There it is. It's one word, apparently. Uh, all five of which are watchable. Curling, ice hockey, dodgeball, lacrosse, and volleyball, where we, the keyboard warriors, take on real athletes in the sports of their choosing. The curling one was funny. You guys suck. You almost got it. Those are my uh, inputs. Thank you. you. Almost got there. I almost got there. The other guys really didn't help. And they oh really my let God, me down. Taryn, what were you doing? They really let me down. That is not how you try to be the lead of a team. They really let me down in a big way. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys. Um, we will see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye. Oh, right, the intro. Oh, that's really bad.